Hey everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and today I'm going to share with you five techniques that I use every single day when I'm designing in Sketch for Mac. Tip number one, using the inner shadow effect to create borders and lines so I can butt things right up next to each other without having any sort of weird spacing issues. It goes like this. If we look at a little interface that we're making, we just kind of zoom in. I want this to have a border on the top of it and I want to do an inner shadow. So I'm going to click on inner shadow right here. I'm going to take this background blur junk off and I'm going to take the blur down obviously. I'll go 0.5 and make it real kind of slick and I'll pick a little bit more of like a neutral color like that. Now you can see, I'm going to zoom in really close, you can see when I click Man, that borders on the inside of my element, and if I wanted to make another one, like if these were table cells that I was making, I could just drag this up, and they literally, they wouldn't affect each other. If they're butted right up next to each other, I don't have to worry about something, what's in front of one, what's in front of something, what's behind something. They are literally just like perfectly aligned. Tip number two is reducing the file size of your project. As you start creating projects in Sketch, the awesomeness of artboards is like mind blowing if you're not used to it. Like creating huge projects with artboards like this, like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 artboards, and, and your projects can start slowing down, especially if you're using imagery inside of your project. So a good thing to do is the built-in tool in Sketch is to go up to file and just hit reduce file size, let it do its magic, and, and sometimes it'll just be a couple kilobytes, sometimes it'll be megabytes, sometimes it might be even more, and you just wanna continually, as you pull in those images, reduce file size. There's no sort of loss of image quality, nothing like that. It, it literally affects the look of your project zero, but it speed, keeps your project files quicker and speedier and it keeps Sketch moving fast. Tip number three is to actually drag images into the fill panel to give yourself images to work with. So you can see uh, in our project here, we have a profile uh, in the top, this huge box right here. And when we look inside, it's just a shape, it's just a mask, okay? And, and using Sketch's multiple kind of fill ability, I put a gradient down on the bottom, but then right here you can see this fill is actually a image. The ability to literally just open up the fill panel like this, go to whatever folder you have an image and drag it right in and drop it, Bam! That's amazing! Having that kind of control over images in your project is awesome. Tip number four, using the command key to find the exact center between two points when you're in edit mode. Here's what I mean. If we zoom into a shape, you can see we have this little box. It is actually a rectangle shape that's been filled with a gradient. But let's say I don't want it to actually be a rectangle anymore, a rounded rectangle. I want it to be like a diamond. Okay, um, I can hit enter on the shape and I turn into edit mode, which gives me all the points of the edges. And you can see if I drag my mouse or the cursor over the line of each side, I get a little pen tool kind of with, with the plus. We wanna add a point. I want the direct middle, okay, to, to these points. So I'm gonna hold down the command key. And you can see as soon as I press the command key, it's gonna find the middle point between the two points. And I can just click there and click there and now I can be really precise. I can just arrow up one, two, three, four, five times, and I can arrow this down one, two, three, four, five times, okay? And now we have a perfect shape, and I found the exact middle using just the command key. Boom! Tip number five, nesting symbols. I've done an entire video on how to nest symbols and the power of nesting symbols and all that good stuff, and so you can see that video right here, but if you're interested in nesting symbols, here's a little sample. When I'm looking at my project and I have multiple different pieces to this project, okay, you can see right here, let's zoom in on it. You can see that uh, each one of these little boxes has a couple elements inside of it. It has a title, and it has the box itself, and it has an icon. Well, I've already made symbols out of each of the icons. Then what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've made a symbol out of the box itself. So now this box is a symbol, and inside of it there's another symbol of the icon itself. So now you can see when I do that, if if within your nested symbol, let's just drill down on this real quick. If within your nested symbol, you have like shapes or like sized shapes, 
Sketch will recognize those as similar objects and it will give you the opportunity to override within the symbol those elements. So you can see I have my icons here to the left and I have one of the icons that is a symbol inside of this topic box symbol. Now, instead of having all of these be individual kind of like elements, I can just have one like this, gives me the override, okay? to say, okay, we don't want to say favorites, we want to say hearts. Let's go back and fix our symbol and make sure that this is center aligned and center there. And now it'll be perfect out here, okay? See how awesome that is? And then it also gives us the override for the symbols. So we can change it to the stat symbol or back to the heart symbol. Now what we can do is, let's, let's get rid of all of this garbage. So you can see how awesome it is to override symbols, to nest symbols within other symbols. And the beautiful thing is, now if I come back in that one symbol and I say, hey, you know what, I think I really want this text to be like an accent color. I've changed every single one and I still have the overrides available to me. Bow, 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 bow. Amazing. Those are my top five sketch tips and tricks, things I use every day to improve my workflow and be more productive. What kind of tips and tricks do you have? What kind of design software are you using? Let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, maybe like and subscribe to this channel because I'm gonna be coming out with a bunch more tutorials on design and front end development uh, that I hope you guys really, really enjoy. I hope you guys are out making amazing things. I hope you're designing amazing stuff. Have a great week, see ya.